Welcome to part 1 of the Circle Tangent Visuals in Unity tutorial by Peerplay. In this tutorial I will teach you how to create visuals with circles, using an algorithm to find circles that are tangent to two other circles. We will map the position of the inner circle to the thumbstick of a game controller and make the visuals respond to audio. If you find the contents of my tutorials helpful, consider supporting me at Patreon. In doing so, you enable me to create these for my peers and you get access to the tutorial source files and exclusive content. Special thanks to Andrew Leboy, Devin the Dude, Frere Thibaut, Derek Vechter and Asperdine. Let's start by covering some of the basics of circle theory that we need to understand to do our calculations. So what is a circle and how do we create them? The first characteristic of a circle is that it has a fixed center point. A circle is a two-dimensional figure and therefore its center point consists out of an X and a Y location. As we are going to work in three dimensions, the Y component becomes the Z and will leave the Y at zero, which represents the plane on which we draw. The second characteristic is that of a radius. This is a fixed float value to specify the size of the circle drawn. All outer points are the same distance, or in other words, equidistance from the center. Let's talk about the circle tangent. The tangent of a circle is equal to any point on the edge of a circle. In 3D models, we would talk about normal directions, and a tangent is the 90 degree rotation of the normal direction. We eventually want to calculate circles that exactly touch two different circles, so we need a way to check if a circle is tangent to another. With circles, we can be sure that if two circles touch, their tangents are lining up perfectly. Now what we need is a way to actually calculate the positions on the edge of a circle. As you probably know, when you rotate a full circle around, you will have rotated 360 degrees. Now while degrees are used in our daily lives to measure the sides of rotations, in mathematics and especially trigonometry, we use radians to get an angle. Pi is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. Pi multiplied by 2 is equal to 360 degrees. Unity has a built-in math constant called dec 2 red which will convert a degree value to radians. We can then use the outcome of that value to calculate the position on the edge of the circle using sinus and cosinus and multiply by the radius of the circle. The red line is a sinus curve and the blue line is a cosinus curve. Sinus starts at 0, goes smoothly up to 1, then down to negative 1 and back to 0. The cosinus curve starts at 1, goes smoothly down to negative 1 and back to 1 again. We need both of these curves to calculate a circle. The x-coordinate will use the sinus curve. Its position starts at 0, which is the center of the circle. Then it goes to 1, which is the right side of the circle. The y-coordinate will use the cosinus curve and starts at 1, which is on the top of the circle. Combining these two curves in the equation makes us able to calculate any position on the outside of the circle. What I find fascinating about circles is how much meaning there is to them. Some of the symbol meanings of a circle are unity, infinity and wholeness. It represents the infinite nature of energy and the inclusivity of the universe. Now look at the sinus and cosinus waves we just used to calculate the circle. These waves are not just used for calculating a circle, but are actually frequencies. Audio consists out of frequencies as well. A couple of months ago, I realized that our life itself are much like a sinus wave. We have times that we feel up, joyful and full of hope and strength, followed by times that we feel down, weak and depressed. But as long as we are alive, we make these curves. Once our heart stops beating, we measure a flat line. What this really tells me is that when things don't go well for you, know that you only know about the ups because you experience the downs. You are alive, and life is full of wonders. Now that I've covered some theory, let's continue by writing a function in Unity to get the tangent of a circle by a certain degree, so we can use that eventually to create our circle tangent visuals. Start a new empty project in Unity. I've already added a couple of empty folders for the materials, prefabs, scripts and textures. The only thing I've added to the project is a transparent texture of a white circle outline. You can find the download link to this texture by following the link in the description. We will use this texture on a quad to easily visualize the calculations we do for our circles. And we're going to create a prefab of our quad. So let's go to game object, go to 3D object and select the quad. 
Now let's rotate the quad in its X position by 90 degrees. So it's facing upwards. Now let's remove the mesh collider. We don't need that. And let's create a material for the circle. So right click, create, and we're going to create a material. And we'll call this circle. Now we're going to use the standard shader and for its rendering mode, we're going to select the cutout. Now let's click on the little circle in front of the albedo and we're going to select the circle. And let's set the alpha cutoff to 0.1. Now when you import the texture, it probably doesn't show up as transparent because you have to check alpha is transparent. Without that check, normally Unity shows it like this, but we need it to be transparent. So when you do that, hit apply, then it's transparent. Now let's apply the material to the quad. So select the quad, go to materials and drag and drop this into the inspector. Now let's rename the quad to be a circle. Go to prefabs and we're going to drag and drop the circle into the folder prefabs. Now that that's done, we can select the circle and remove it from the scene. Now let's create an empty game object and we're going to call this the tangent circles. And this will be our object on which we will spawn all our circles and do everything we want to create for our visuals. And to do that, we need a couple of scripts. So let's go to scripts and right click create and go to C sharp. And we're going to call this the circle tangent. Now circle tangent will be a container script that holds all of the functions that we need to find the circle tangents. Now let's create another script and this script will inherit from the circle tangent and we're going to call this the tangent circles. Let's open up the tangent circle script. Now the first thing we want to do is make the tangent circles inherit from the circle tangent script. So instead of modi behavior, it's going to inherit from circle tangent. Now what we eventually want is to create two circles, one circle that is an inner circle and one is an outer circle. And in between of these circles, we want to instantiate a lot of different circles that are tangent to them. Now let's start by creating a public reference to our circle prefab. So we're going to type public game object and we'll call this the circle prefab. Now for our circle tangent visuals, we need at least two different circles, an inner circle and an outer circle. So let's create a private game object and we'll call this the inner circle game object and the outer circle game object. Now a circle consists out of a position and a radius. The position is an x, y, z value and the radius is one float value. If we combine these together, we can get a factor four. So let's write a public factor four And we'll call this the inner circle and we'll call this also the outer circle. Now we need to instantiate these circles. So let's say that inner circle game object is casted to a game object instantiate. And we want to instantiate the circle prefab. Now let's copy paste this line. And we also want to do this for the outer circle. Now in the update, we want to set the inner circle and outer circle game object to become the position of its X, Y, and Z values of inner circle. And its W value is going to be the scale. So let's do that. So we'll say inner circle game object dot its transform dot position is a new vector three, which is the inner circle dot X, the inner circle dot y and the inner circle dot z now for its local scale is a new vector three and we will use here the inner circle dot w value now bear in mind that our w value is the radius and not the scale so the radius times two is equal to the scale so we'll multiply this by two now let's do the same for the outer circle as well. Let's save the script and go back to Unity. Back in Unity, let's add the tangent circles to the tangent circle object. Here we need to select the prefab. So let's select the circle. And for the inner and outer circle, we can set a size and a position. 
So let's set the size of the inner circle to 3 and the outer circle is going to be 10. Now let's start the scene. And now you can see that we've got two circles here. And when we change these positions, everything will change accordingly. To create the tangent circles, we must first find the tangent position of the outer circle by any specific angle of rotation. There is more to the equation than that, but this is the first step. So let's open up the circle tangent script and create a function for that. Let's remove the update and start. And we want our function to output a vector 3 position. So we're going to type a protected. So we can only use that when we inherit from the script. And we'll create a vector 3. And we'll call this the get rotated tangent. And for this function to work, we need to input two different variables. One is a float, and we'll call this the degree. And we'll also create a float, and we'll call this scale. Now the first thing we need to do is to convert the degree to radians. So I'm going to create a double, which has a bit more precision than a float. And we'll call this the angle. And that is going to be the degree multiplied by the mathf function dot degree to radians. Now if we hold the mouse on a deck to red, we'll see a tooltip text which says that this is just a constant number of 0 0.017453294. Now, as I've talked about in the introduction, we're going to create an X position and a Z position using sinus and cosinus. So let's start with the X position. So float X is, and we're going to get the scale multiplied by the sinus of angle. But for this case, I'm not going to use the mathf sinus function, but I'm going to use the system.math function because that is in doubles and that will give a little bit more precision. So we'll say system dot math dot sinus and we want to get the sinus of the angle now this won't work because it's a float and we can't multiply it by double so we're going to cast this to a float again now let's copy paste this line so we'll create this for the z as well and that is scale multiplied by the cosinus of the angle and now we can simply return this as a vector 3. So we'll say return a new vector 3 of x, 0, z. Now let's save the script and implement it into the tangent circles. Now to test this out, we'll spawn another circle at a certain angle. So we'll create another and we'll call this the tangent circle game object. Now let's also make that we can specify how big this circle is. So we'll create a public float and we'll call this the tangent circle radius and another public float to set the degree for our rotation. Of course, we need to instantiate the tangent circle as well. So let's copy this line and call this tangent circle go. Now in the update, we need to set the tangent circle go dot it's transform dot position to become and here we need to get the function so get rotated tangent and for its degree we'll use the public variable of degree and for the scale we'll use the radius of the outer circle so outer circle dot w and we'll do this plus the outer circle position so outer circle game object dot transform dot position and now for the scale we'll say tangent circle game object dot transform dot local scale is a new vector 3 and here we'll get the tangent circle radius tangent circle radius and tangent circle radius multiplied by 2 and that's it so let's save the script and go back to Unity. Now back in Unity, let's run the scene. And at this moment, you don't see the tangent circle because the radius is set to zero. So let me increase the size. And we can change the degree. And based on the degree of rotation, it will rotate along the curve of the circle. 
So when we increase the size of the circle, it will stay in the correct position. And when we change the position as well. So now we can find the tangent position of the outer circle. We will use this in the next part when we will complete the algorithm to spawn many circles that hit the tangent of the outer and inner circle. For now, I'd like to thank you for following this tutorial part. To stay updated to a new released part, subscribe to this channel and turn the notifications on. Happy coding!